Good morning to you all and uh, thank you so very much for joining us again. Uh, it's a beautiful morning, a little hot, a little humid, but I think it's a beautiful morning. So thank you for uh, spending your morning with us. We are grateful that you were able to join us back. We are here to share uh, four strands that will be running as a front runner during the Creative Experiences event that is happening on 10th of July at Adobe Office Noida. Adobe India has opened doors to educators and to school leaders uh, to bring in a, a day to celebrate a culture of creativity. So here we are presenting to you exactly that. I'm Minakshi Oberon, who is the CEO of Deep Pedagogics, and we, in partnership with Adobe, bring you this program as a partner. With me today is Duhita Parmar. Duhita, if you may please introduce yourself here. Good morning, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us again today. I'm Dohita Parmar, uh, a team member of Deep Pedagogics and an education technology consultant. I again welcome you and looking ahead for a wonderful session today again. Thank you. Yes, we use the word again because this is our third session today and uh, we are here to discuss four strands that we speak about but what's a session without a quote so here we start or begin the day with a quote from uh, who else sir ken robinson creativity is as important now in education as literacy and we must and we should i would actually replace this should by must treat it with the same status over the last few days, uh, we have been receiving a number of queries about what are the programs that Adobe offers in education in India. So we are going to first today talk about those programs and also will encourage you to please post your comments, queries, uh, any ideas, any worries in the chat window so that we are able to address them. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'm going to request Dohita to take over and speak about these programs to you, please. Thank you so much. So as said, uh, yes, a lot of educators have shared that they would like to know more a little bit about the Adobe Education Program for K-12. So sharing with you some details about how to go about it why you should be taking it and what are the benefits and advantages for the same. Now, uh, Adobe Digital Disha is an initiative conceptualized and implemented by Adobe Incorporation. It is an India specific program conceptualized in sync with Digital India and Skill India mission. It aims to empower educators to provide digital experiences to students to become future ready. Adobe has undertaken the task to digitally revolutionize today's education needs. Before I go ahead, I would like to add on that there's another feature in Adobe other than the digital Disha program, which is the Adobe Creative Campus. Adobe Creative Campus is unique program, very subsidized, which offers the whole bundle of creative apps. Applications like Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro and many more are there. So in totality, there are a number of 24 apps and cloud services. But again, uh, I would like to highlight over here that the Adobe Digital Disha program is free of cost for the schools to integrate. By integrating Adobe Spark in the school curriculum, Adobe Digital Disha program aims to orient teachers and students to emerging technologies in the digital era, introduce vistas for exper experiential and exhilarating learning, empower educators to teach new age skills, create and share impactful lesson plans and enhance the learning outcome therein. Adobe Spark is an integrated suite of storytelling applications for the mobile and web developed by Adobe Systems. It is based on Adobe's artificial intelligence platform called the Adobe Sensei and promotes machine learning over there. Further going ahead, Adobe Digital Disha, as already shared, is an India-specific program. Uh, it has a 4E strategy, 
which has undertaken the task to digitally revolutionize today's education needs. That is the K-12, the higher education and not leaving behind the skilling centers. How? By providing Adobe Spark, which is a tool to transform teaching and learning in response to the needs of the experience era. If you look on the right hand side, the four E's are as engage, execute, evaluate and experience. So how do we engage by partnerships with higher education systems, K-12 and giving skills? How do you educate to for uh, professional development, student learning and employability? We evaluate the monitor uh, to monitor the quality and the success stories. By experience, we mean we have competitions, certificates, awards and recognitions also happening over there. So it's not simply participating, but definitely we all look forward to some uh, uh, encouragement in the form of certificates and awards also, which are not only helpful for students, but for educators also. K-12 students will also gain a competitive edge over here. They will be able to develop creative and design thinking, uh, enhance the collab collaboration skills, also craft exceptional journeys for project based learning, which is the need of the R nowadays. Uh, again, reinforcing the fostering digital creativity, how it is going to help. So for higher education, uh, Adobe Spark enables you to create video lectures, digital lesson plans, research projects, department circulars, digital resumes, creative portfolios and web pages, social media posts. And if I'm not wrong, not even a single of these is that you can do without nowadays. You have to be updated with all these. Adobe Spark for K-12 helps in developing STEM curriculum, creative storytelling, project-based learning, class reports and newsletters, ICT and digital clubs. So all those things can be managed with the help of the Adobe Spark, definitely. And I would Let like to add here, uh, why does higher education have to be boring or K-12 have to be boring? Not because you have reached your grade 9, 10, 11 and 12 that everything should turn black and white and that circular should look like circulars. Circulars could be done in an interesting manner. Uh, these are department circulars. These could be sent out to uh, circular sent to parents or even digital resumes. You know, all of these options that have been put in front of you, it's just to make them more reader friendly. Imagine yourself sitting with just about uh, 10 circulars which look like, like black and white layouts of a lot of words. How many of you would be interested in reading all of those 10? Well, what if you change the look and feel of it? It becomes just more reader friendly. Sorry, Dohita, I just had to say this in between. Not at all. It adds on to the learning. And definitely, as uh, Minakshi has said, the word circulars. You know, when our coordinators and HODs send those circular after circular, especially before summer break, after summer break, or any holidays, uh, most of us do not even pay attention to it, what is written in the circular. circular. So uh, if these circulars are the look and feel are enhanced for them, each and every one is definitely going to have a deeper look into these. Coming to the benefits of Adobe Spark. So this Spark, Spark, Spark thing is happening since few days. So what are the benefits of the same? It's an integrated program. You know, you can use it on your desktop, on the web browsers and mobile devices because it syncs with your Spark projects automatically between your computer and the mobile devices. The login issues are not there because it's a very easy login which has an ability to set up single sign on so students can easily log in with their existing school ID itself. Uh, it has an enhanced control. Schools own the accounts and exercise the admin rights. So you are not dependent on some other person for the admin rights. The school itself has the admin rights themselves in order to keep the students safe because we need to be again uh, when we talk about technology, cyber security is always there and should always be there in the back of our minds. So here the your students data and everything is very safe and secure. In addition, 
image results are more age appropriate for K-12 students. We have the premium features over here. So Adobe Spark's premium features, which are used to customize Spark creations, are included for free. The roles and responsibilities. As for Adobe, they have the capacity building workshops. They enable to give you the free access to Adobe Spark with premium features. The content and sample lesson plans are also there. Availability, according to the, if I talk about the academic institutions, what all uh, roles and responsibilities do they need to be having? So there uh, we have the uh, availability of computers with internet facility and the details of the faculty to be trained as Adobe Digital Educators. But uh, I missed out one point over here as a role and responsibility for Adobe. We have also got the Adobe Education Exchange programs also which are held. So that was a little brief ad about the Adobe Digital Disha program. Any further queries or you want to join in for this wonderful opportunity and a wonderful program, which is again I'm emphasizing again that it's free of cost. There are no charges involved in the same. So to, to join this program, please write to us at dpedagogics at the rate outlook.com. We need few details from your site in the form of the address of the institute, pin code, name of the IT admin, email address of the IT admin, mobile number of the uh, IT admin. So these five details are needed for enrolling in this Adobe Digital Disha program. And you can always write to us at dpedagogics at the rate outlook.com. I'll also share the email ID and the details which are needed in the chat window. Still, if we have any queries, any questionnaires, kindly type in in the chat window. We are here for the rest of the day also to clarify the same. Thank you so much, and uh, Minakshi. Thank you, yeah. Dohita. Uh, I think that was a very um, useful information. And there was a question in the chat window, but I've answered that. Um, what I'm doing is uh, I'm uh, trying to answer the questions as they come in. But our chat window is actually loaded with questions. Sometimes we might miss out. If you miss out, we request you to kindly retype. Do I have addressed that? But I'm going to bring it here. The question that was asked was, uh, are the certificates given by Adobe or third party? Well, these are authentic certificates from Adobe that you get and not a third party. No cost involved in this program. Uh, there are subsidized costs involved if you purchase uh, Adobe Creative Campus, which gives you Adobe Creative Cloud for your entire school, about 100 licenses. And um, the cost is much less than what the commercial cost of that Creative Cloud is. In fact, all the schools who purchase uh, Photoshop, I would say they really need to rethink because the entire Creative Cloud with all its twin can actually be purchased very roughly between three lakh to three and a half lakh a year. So it's 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 really um, a price which I don't think anybody can challenge. Yeah. So uh, here can I are. add one yeah. thing here? Please? Yeah, 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 please. Can please. I add? So uh, dear all, uh, as for the certificates, uh, she has already addressed the query. I just wanted to add it, cannot uh, hold myself. The certificates are beautifully designed. They are like uh, you feel happy receiving them in your hands. They are literally very, very nicely designed. Awesome. Thank you. I think you'll get a feel of it once you're a part of a 10th of a July event. Uh, that is a Creative Experiences Day. When you come that day, you will be awarded with the certificate of participation. And I'm so looking forward to meeting you there. So it, it, it's really great to have these interactions with you. And we are always here to clarify any doubt that you have. Uh, bringing focus back to what we were here for today, we are here to speak about creativity and diversity. I think we have uh, addressed most of the questions, but as we go, we'll be happy to take in more. So please keep posting your questions out there. My voice is cracking. Duita, can you please confirm? 
Yes, yes, the voice is cracking. OK, is it better now? Yes, much better. Yeah, all right. Yes. So um, I'm going to talk all about uh, what creativity and diversity have to deal with. And uh, there is, uh, I think when it comes to personalized learning, there's one topic that gets swept away under the rug, whether we realize it or not, that of the diverse, that is of the diverse learners, of course. And uh, it is about those students who sit in our classrooms, whether it could be a cultural background or different in learning abilities, styles, or personalities. Despite the fact that many students are constantly engaged in a complex transformation of culturally influenced identity, which in many cases uh, can have a major impact on our academic performance, whether we realize it or not. Oftentimes, we don't anticipate and address these cultural needs as a, they should or as we should. And if you don't know uh, about the cultural diversity that is sitting in your classroom. I think the graphic put out over here would give you a good idea about what diversity could look like. T for, let's say, different individuals uh, valuing what value sets that they bring. And each child sitting in our classroom brings in a different value set along with. But looking at each other, respecting each other, um, recognizing each other, you know, not hiding who you are, and regardless of, uh, you know, your skin or your, uh, um, you know, from which state or which city or which place you hail from, the kind of intellect that you bring to a classroom and the kind of talent that you bring. And of course, there is many, there are many, many things beyond just the obvious. So what is the need of the R? Well, I would, before getting to that, actually bring to a uh, forefront the, the quote that's on the right. We are like a box of crayons each one of us are unique but when we get together the picture is complete and i would say try making one crayon or two color miss out of a box and add the same color i'm sure your students will come and tell you ma'am this is not a complete set well if they can feel like that i think we should be recognizing it too and moving forward informed that we need to create culturally responsive classrooms what is culturally responsive teaching? Well, it's nothing but an approach that empowers students intellectually, socially, emotionally, and politically by using cultural reference to impart knowledge, skills, and attitudes. I would want to pause here to make uh, to 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 actually jog your memory into a few days back when we had a very unfortunate incident in uh, JNK. Uh, we had our Jawans killed out there and there were many classrooms that were affected. Why were the classrooms affected? Because children of those uh, soldiers sit in our classrooms and somewhere we, we take it for granted, we take life for granted and we take our freedom for granted. We do not stop to realize what we are dealing with. Well, a similar incident happened uh, in my experience too, and I love sharing those experiences because I get to meet, I mean, my, my job profile is such that I get to meet multiple people. So while on, uh, I, was, I was doing a Minecraft session in Hyderabad, we had students from CRPF uh, schools also come in. And uh, when I was interacting with students, and one of the uh, students was like really happy working with Minecraft. And, you know, unknowingly, I was just promoting her saying this was a girl's first STEM event. She was so chirpy and uh, she was so happy about what she had created. Uh, the teacher say, you know, I'm made our day today because this child is one of the uh, members of affected families and she lost her father and you just gave her a platform to showcase her energy her talent and spring her back to life it really gave me goosebumps and i'm telling you when i'm narrating this to you it's given me goosebumps again yes that's the kind of impact that we can create unknowingly and imagine if we were doing this knowingly. How far can we reach in our classrooms? Culturally responsive teaching is transformative. It means respecting cultures, experiences of various groups, then using all the resources that you have into teaching. In, in culturally responsive teaching, we must appreciate the existing strengths and accomplishments that sit in our classrooms and develop further instructions on them. 
sometimes some of our students might be really good at some of the subjects, some of the concepts, some of the content or some particular topic. I think we could just let them be the front runners without really victimizing or without really uh, talking about culture. Let's just bring in culture. Well, if you don't have this term of uh, being culturally responsive in your classroom, I think we should add it to our repertoire. It is the process of using cultural knowledge, prior experiences, performance styles of diverse students to make learning more appropriate and effective for them and more rewarding for ourselves at the end of the day. To respond to a culture is ultimately to see something bigger than just an individual. No person constitutes a culture. So if I had known that, you know, this girl is from one of the affected families, I would have gone overboard, maybe, you know, just trying to give her a platform. But here, unknowingly, we are trying to treat students as nothing more than individuals and ignore the cultural or any diverse backgrounds that they come with. There was also a student over there who belonged to Kashmir. But we did not give any indifferent behaviors because we did not even know. And even knowingly, we wouldn't have done that and we know that. But today's children are increasingly more diverse in their cultures, languages, abilities, interests, and learning styles. So we must create environments where student differences are supported rather than, uh, you know, highlighted or brought to forefront and celebrated so that all students are provided the best opportunity to learn. The celebration of diversity, what we usually see in schools is that, you know, uh, we celebrate this day and uh, we celebrate this child and we ask them to bring, OK, you're from this state or you're from that state or that country. Just bring that and say it in front of others. We're actually just about, uh, you know, being on the surface. So I would call it knowing this culture on the surface only. And it's 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 a small world that we are making them known, but Cultural response of teaching is about building the capacity of an individual student into using his strengths to further learn any concept. Uh, there are many ways in which, you know, we can actually ride our principles on. So uh, the core principles of this classroom are cultural proficiency. That is identify uh, the development. Uh, identity development and self-reflection without really bringing it as a label on that child and be very, very conscious or mindful about it. So the teacher plays a very good role here by balancing out how to uh, bring in the identity or respect that identity and let other students be respectful towards it. Developing and maintaining student relationships and empowering students rather than us doing things for them that, you know, uh, today it's uh, it's it's Pongal. Let's uh, celebrate and let you lead this. Well, when we let that child lead it, we have to engage everybody. It's not this child who should be put on pedestal to say, since it's in your state that you celebrate Pongal, you should be asking. So this child should know. Uh, how to communicate to other students or how to bring in other students to the table to co-celebrate that whole event, even if that means bringing in certain things from your home, own home or looking into things that if your home has elements of his state, let's bring it back together to celebrate it together. So that actually will lead to our next round, which is knowledge construction. How culture frames the way brain processes this information. So what children normally do is that when you're celebrating, let's say, um, any festival, let me just pick up a, um, um, the Ashtami that we do. So we have a Puri and Chole and a Halwa combination out there. Now, there are st uh, other states in our country itself who do not celebrate this festival, but they might draw connections to say, you know what, I think we also have a day of celebration where we cook something. Uh, or where we actually worship God to and offer these as food. So the comparative studies would actually lead to uh, uh, knowledge construction. So we are juxtaposing in a positive manner rather than highlighting just one. We are respecting all and making those connections. Differentiated assessment using culturally sensitive assessments are alignment with student needs. Sometimes I think all of you have uh, seen the image where uh, a fish is asked to climb the wall, uh, the tree. Certainly that's not the way we're going to do assessments. So we need to be very mindful of assessments too. 
how do we bring it in bringing native language into your classroom make your classrooms language rich the only language that we want our students to speak is in english because that's a global language along with that please promote hindi by adding those words to your word wall add your local languages whether it be hindi punjabi telugu marathi so whatever language is your local language let's respect all and put them out there the simplest way is putting them on word wall understanding history and culture of each of those because all of us have a very rich history and cultural background community culture into the classroom bring in parents bring in grandparents they would love to tell you stories but celebration must be uh, for all uh, and should be inclusive family involvement certainly is a big deal we have a whole library with assets that where the culturally uh, you know responsive books or texts are available so how to uh, increase this cultural sensitivity in your classroom i know all of you know what i've just spoken about but let me just throw in a few ideas autobiographical writing assignments write an autobiography oral presentations on students native countries discussing current events from a multicultural viewpoint and i know most of these things are already happening in the class so what's the role play of spark in our classroom let me throw in a few more then i'm going to talk about spark bring in diverse guest speakers that's another way deliver diverse forms of content which means you not only uh, deliver in in a way that you uh, deliver every day in your classrooms whether it is by talking or chalkboard or whichever method take up some ways of teaching which might be relevant in another uh, let's say you have a uh, uh, you have students from other countries ask them how do you teach and learn in your classrooms what do your classrooms look like what does your school teaching look like so bring in those forms of content utilize different forms of technology needless to say take time to learn about students most important gamify learning i'm going to circle and circle and circle that so culturally responsive language very important let's get into how culturally responsive teaching is less about using racial pride as a motivator and more about mimicking student cultures cultural learning styles and tools i have my three go factors here gamify it make it social storyify it let's get deep dive gamify it most games employ a lot of cultural tools you would find an oral tradition repetition solving a puzzle making connections between things that don't seem to be related that's gamifying and this is gamifying for me these are some of the assignments that you might be using in your classrooms every day travel journal when you do a travel journal you gamify the travel journal so when students make their own spark travel journals we collect have a collection of all those spark and we do a virtual gallery walk while they do the virtual gallery walk they have to choose a place that they would like to visit and add on to that very spark to say you know this is where i'm going to go or this is where i'm going i i i wish to go now if you see i am bringing in the element of collaboration and knowledge construction both this is collaboration but the top factor running over here is diversity because i'm trying to highlight diversity in my classroom and the kind of experiences prior experiences that they have knowledge construction is happening basis my diversity being the front runner so that's how you identify the strand that you would want to work on you uh, you can see uh, an image of uh, the massachusetts uh, mass care a direct you know a connection over there would be the jallianwala bagh mass care that's the first thing that comes to my mind and i'm sure your students who have studied about it that's the connection that they will make so gamify it if this is one of the mass cares in the world which the world still remembers what about others why did they happen how did they happen they will all find the causes and they stop respecting each other's rich cultural heritage that they have come from uh it's never too late to be what you might have been it's every word in this entire uh, poster is something that speaks to me because i want what you might have been brings to me my background my culture place which i come from languages that are spoken at my home food that is eaten at my home 
I'm going to bring all of that to forefront and I'm going to challenge my students to create a poster that talks about themselves. So rather than writing autobiography, I would do mind mapping using a spark post all the time. Mind mapping in the similar manner, the same manner, students stop responding. Many a times they choose not to respond because they know in any case, you know, others are responding. So another way of doing mind mapping or maybe just a brainstorm is to create a post. Throw in multiple pictures and let me know what's going on in your mind related to this word. Here's yet another one. There are, with our cultural her heritage, attached multiple stories, multiple deep incidents that are uh, that rest in our history. So I would create a fable game and I would say read, uh, bring bring the fable books from your culture. Let's have an exchange. Read it and then write about uh, write a, uh, a reading response sheet, something like this about it. And then have an exchange to see whether what you have, the way you have perceived that culture, what is the match, what is the gap, and how to correct your information about that culture. So all I'm doing, trying to do over here is make them culturally aware about each other. The next step being make it social organized learning so that students rely on each other will build on diverse students communal orientation. Make a connection. There's a lot of food of food for thought here. Begin the year with spark introductions. Celebrate and capture uh, festivals and celebrations using spark. Liquify feature for identification. It really works. Believe me, it's a beautiful way to identify your students. So uh, before to your classes. I'm sure you have their passport size pictures. Make a kind of a collage on Spark post and liquefy the picture and ask each one to identify who is who. Or better still, make a new seating arrangement for them by using this liquefy feature. It just helps you get to know, recognize features about each other, which you might not even have you know, noticed. Picture provocations from each other's cultures, capturing current incidents or updates and talking about them rather than hiding. Please start talking in your classrooms about current events. There's loads happening around us and there is much social media that is fogging our minds. So therefore clarity in these are certainly required. School magazines, brochures, newsfeed every morning and event videos. Uh, I've put clubbed them all together, but all of these are already there. They exist in your uh, schools. Yet I would encourage if a piece of culture could be added to all of these to celebrate, to identify and to help them uh, feel, uh, feel that matter of pride in their own culture. So I think these are some important steps that we could all take. <coughs> I'm a very firm believer of story. So storify it. Diverse students than all students, I would say, are diverse students learn content more effectively when they can create a coherent narrative about the topic or process presented. I've shared with you an example yesterday. Here's something more. So storytelling. Storytelling can, it can increase empathy. It can help us remember incidents and it encourages cooperation. If storytelling can have such a profound impact on us, then why not bring it into your classrooms and try them out for yourself? When I see you through my eyes, I think that we are different. When I see you through my heart, heart I know we are the same. I didn't say that, but I totally resonate with these words. So I'm not going to uh, dwell further any further into this topic. Because I think we're all very, very aware of what cultures exist in our class. But let me just try and put it in a nutshell, if, if, if possible. That culturally responsive teaching doesn't have to be some performance that the teacher does to entertain students. Or it doesn't have to mention the race or reference or any cultural reference at all. Instead, what makes a practice culturally responsive is... Uh, basically bringing or highlighting or bringing to forefront uh, the traditional, uh, you know, things that we need to respect, we need to bring to focus and we need to highlight to say, uh, I respect my culture because, or I have been, uh, you know, I would want you to understand my identity this way. 
which could involve our life experiences, values, assumptions, and identity as a whole. So with that thought, I'm going to pause here and see if there are any questions in the chat box. Thank you, Meenakshi. It was a wonderful presentation, and I really hope the things are pretty clear. Uh, Chandi, ma'am, the Adobe IDs have been uh, shared with all of you. You need to please uh, kindly check your emails. Any other queries, please? Thank you, Sharda ma'am, for uh, confirming that you have received the mail for access. So once again, all the Adobe IDs, the licenses have been shared with all of you. Still, by chance, if somebody has registered early in the morning or you have not received it, feel free to connect back to us, please. Of course, your task ahead. You have to create a spark on the strand creativity and diversity and submit the link uh, here on the given link. And uh, we expect your responses to be submitted by 27th of June. Uh, and uh, the results will be announced by 10 a.m. on 30th of June, that is on Sunday. Um, I would want to. Uh, close this whole conversation on a uh, on a lighter note that there are only two lasting bequests that we can hope to give our children one of these is roots and the other one is wings and i think we are uh, we, we we make a significant effort in giving wings to our students so why not take roots along with and the cultural inclusiveness of a learning environment will certainly depend on you and the kind of interactions that occur amongst you and your students both. We are very much here to take any of your questions or queries, but if you have to leave or go, we completely understand. Uh, we will be talking uh, about creativity and communication at 4 p.m. And also we will be talking about Adobe Education Exchange Adobe Education Exchange is a place for you to learn, grow, and uh, get recognition, just like uh, our MEC or the Microsoft Educator community. At Adobe Education Exchange, you can do courses, you have resources to look up, uh, you can actually go and look up examples of Spark that people have brought in. When you come back at 4 p.m., we are also going to share with you wealth of resources that you can refer to for making the spark. There will also be a demonstration on how to make a spark video and a spark page. We will be setting our expectations and laying out these expectations absolutely clearly while we meet at 4 p.m. to discuss creativity and communication. Duita, any questions there? Yeah. Yes, we have a few questions. So Sharda sure. ma'am, uh, which slide you have requested to show? Please put the previous slide with details. Can you please uh, type in again which slide? And uh, can we please re explain? Uh, Pratibha ma'am would like to know about the submission work on 27th June. She needs a little bit more clarity on the same. Okay, so we when we expect a spark from you by 27th of June on any one of the strands, any one of the strands between creativity and uh, innovation, creativity and collaboration, creativity and diversity, and creativity and communication. We expect you to make a spark. Uh, it could be a spark page, a spark video, or a spark post, anything where you feel you're able to showcase uh, one task or one activity or one lesson plan, which could be range from one day to one 40 minute period or 50 minute period to uh, one week to one year, whichever way you want it. This is an open invitation to showcase your ability to design a learning engagement on any of these four strands using Spark as a tool and your options being 
Spark post, Spark page, and Spark uh, video. These have to be submitted on the given link by 27th of June, so that when we result, we announce the result on 30th, you're able to prepare yourself to attend our four day training program on 10th of July, which is the creative experiences. Is that uh, good enough or would you want me to talk more details? Uh, just like Sharda has said that she wants to make on all the four uh, you know, strands, you're most welcome to make, but compulsion is only, what is mandatory is that you have to make on at least one. And sorry, one more thing, your spark must very clearly define the strand that you're working on of the four strands, please write, please mention uh, your strand. So you are uh, in the uh, at 4 p.m. when we share, we are going to share with you a mock uh, submission of what my, if I were you, what my submission would look like. Is that good? All right. Uh, so we have Kamal Preet and uh, she would like to know that do we have sessions in Bangalore? Would love to join in. Good news for you, Kamal Preet. We'll soon be coming to Bangalore too. Just about it's it's a matter of a few minutes, a few months, and we are trying to cover all uh, major cities in India. We are going pan India, beginning with uh, Delhi and CR for a very simple reason that Adobe uh, main office rests in. Uh, the national capital and I mean NCR and uh, that's Noida. The plan is certainly to go across the country. We're already working in patches with many of the cities and so yeah certainly your simplest answer is yes. Uh, uh, Nisha ma'am and Vanita ma'am, the email IDs that you had mentioned while registering. So when I look at the licenses, your licenses have been mailed on that particular ID only. Uh, so Vanita Garg ma'am, you had mentioned your Gmail ID over here. So on the same, you should have received the mail. Just recheck it once again still if it is not there, uh, kindly just uh, type in in the chat window. <laughs> yes, diversity is certainly in action. So yeah, we are right here uh, to answer your questions. If you have any, uh, we are still here. And if you have any questions, please just ask away. Otherwise, we will see you at 4 p.m. And uh, please do come back. Thank you so very much for joining. It's always a pleasure interacting with you. You people are so responsive. And we really would want this event to be one of the highlight events because our uh, going across India much depends on the success of this event. We seek your partnership to make this event a major success. So I hope you're able to uh, resonate with our thoughts. If there is any which way where we can help you or feel more comfortable, feel more uh, or help you understand this whole platform better, we are here. At 4 p.m., we will be demonstrating all three forms and showing uh, an exemplar along with talking about the rest of the things that I've just mentioned. But thank you so very much for joining in. I'm going to stop recording now, but uh, we are.